We want to talk about the JC's Day, and I'll tell you what, uh, that organization to me was one of the finest things I ever did in life. It really was. I was president in 72. I was very fortunate. I spent 14 years in the Missouri legislature, and one of the funniest things that happened is when I got up there and I was interviewed, and they said, well, what have you ever done in Sykeston? And I said, well, I was a Sykeston JC. And they said, that's it? And I said, let me tell you something. If you're Sykeston JC, it says it all. That's all it is. It's the hardest working young men in the community. They drink a lot of beer. They have a lot of fun, but they do more good than any, any other organization in Sykeston. We started Pee Wee football back then. Uh, in those days, we uh, were very involved in the, uh, baseball. And uh, uh, of course, they're the big one, the rodeo. The rodeo has been so good for this community. So good. It's, it's brought a lot of people, and there's been a lot of nights that's been completely sold out. You know, I know time's money. Everybody tells you that. But, but when you're doing something like that that's so far uh, worth more to help somebody that's not as fortunate as you are, then, then you've done a lot of good things. Hey, I'm in an interview. What do you need? <laughs> Well, he was coming about two. Is he not there? He's not. Okay, are you still there? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, he'll be there in a little bit. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to cut this gentleman short here in a minute. I'll be there. So, uh, if you need me to go back and lock up, I'll lock up. I'm gonna push him out of here, and I'll be out there. So, all right, bye. Sorry about that. That's okay. My. Um, so you need to get going. Uh, so you need to get going. So. No. Yeah. Soon. Yeah. I do. Uh, could we maybe get like five more minutes? Sure, sure. No, that's fine. Got broken bones and an aching smile. And the devil says that I can stay a while. But when he's done, take your hand. You to the promised land. Devil's gonna make me a free man. Said the devil's gonna make me a free man. Said the devil's gonna make me a free man. His face that will be my resting place. How bad, baby, can it really be when I'm in hell and you're with me? The devil's gonna make me a free man. So the JC organization has actually been around since 1934 in Sykes, Missouri. Uh, and then the rodeo came along a few years later, 1953 was the first rodeo that we threw for the community. A few guys like Mr. Art Saunders came together and said, hey, we can throw this project to raise money for this community. And now 70th anniversary this year, and it's, it's winding up to look like a great success. R. Saunders was, a, I believe he was a promoter, rodeo promoter in, in down south, I believe Arkansas. And he uh, came up here to pitch an idea for a fundraiser or so for uh, us to have an activity, moving the sport of rodeo to the, to the north a little bit and uh, brought it to our club and we ran with it from there. They just decided, let's try it. 
and it started at the old VFW Park baseball field. Some of the first JCs actually went to the bank and signed notes, personal notes, to help finance this thing and get it off the ground. And uh, they, you'd be hard pressed to find someone to do that nowadays. But uh, they believed in it and and worked hard. And it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sunday afternoons were terribly hot, so they decided to move it to Wednesday evening and cut out the Sunday performances, which was really good for people that traveled. They gave them Sunday to get back home, and we didn't have to contend with the heat. I'm proud that the JCs are able to keep the rodeo going. Of course, you know, they bought that ground out there, and they've just added to it. They've added lots of buildings I've noticed out there and new corrals for the, for the cattle and stuff like that. The rodeo just keeps going, and it's a good rodeo. If you like rodeos, it's a very, very good rodeo. And I put it up against any in the country. All the money that comes from rodeo, we give back to the area. Um, but we do way more than that. When the ice storm hit and Sykeson lost power for a week or two weeks or however it was, um, we knew that we needed to help out. So we delivered a lot of hot meals. Um, we cleared a lot of driveways and to help clean up, um, just anything we could provide. Um, I think we actually set up a shelter at the grounds. Um, we didn't have power, but we had generators enough to heat the rooms for people to come get warm. During the big flood, we set up a sandbagging operation out there that went for two solid weeks, and we were out there nonstop, 24 hours, filling sandbags for people to come get to help protect their house or shop or whatever. So it's more than just giving the money, it's actually getting involved in the community and doing what's needed. You know, we pledged at one point, pledged half a million dollars to give to the YMCA, and we fulfilled it. Each year, we give a gracious donation to the Kenny Rogers Center. It's the old Sarah Palsy Center. It's the only uh, center that gives, you know, free therapy to kids, both, you know, physical, visual, stuff like that, like speech therapy. And these kids get to go to for free. You know, that there's not a center like that, I don't believe. Uh, any closer than Memphis or St. Louis, and we have it right here in Sykes, Missouri. And the JCs partner up with them each and every year to make sure that facility has what they need so the kids in our surrounding community get what they need. The year I was president, we bought the first ambulance for the city of Sykeston. Back in those days, every funeral home was the emergency vehicle if you were hurt in an accident. They're the ones that picked up the person. But as the years go, these guys do so much for this community, so much. And, uh, Anybody in Sykeson needs to appreciate it. And I know people in Sykeson say, hey, you've been in one rodeo, you've been in them all. That's not true. It's, it's kind of like a football game or a baseball game. That's not the way it is. But it's a really great performance that's brought to Sykes to Missouri by a bunch of young guys that need to be rewarded for their hard work. It's a social group, meetings every Tuesday night. We have elections. Uh, we've got a board that directs us. Uh, and then that spins down to the rodeo board. But we're all working toward one goal, betterment of the community, as well as uh, individual development. I, I think it was very good for me to be involved in this to help me grow as an individual. They have other events. Uh, we have a big crawfish boil, but it's all about putting money back into our community. Any of our events, that's the whole goal, is obviously to help build the event bigger every year but also to contribute to the community. We've uh, sponsored the Kenny Rogers Cerebral Palsy Center, uh, the hospital, the YMCA, the list goes on and on what they've done with the proceeds from these events. Growing up out there, you know, dad was JC and I, I really admired everything that they do for the community. I obviously looked up to my dad and all of his friends that I'd gotten to know out there. And so I was, I was really excited to have the opportunity to come out there and join them and help carry on the tradition that, that they had started. Many generations before them even, coming out of college, getting into a full-time career, you know, wherever I was headed at the time, I, I really wanted to be involved with the community and help, help make a difference, and that's something that is a key aspect of the rodeo. Being born and raised in Sykes, Missouri, the, the rodeo's in your blood. I knew from the very beginning that I was gonna be a JC, I never would have thought that I would be honored to be in the general chairman of the rodeo uh, this year, but you know, I, I was very honored to have that uh, experience in my life and be able to give back to Sykes. In high school, you watched the rodeo, you hung out with your friends here. Even though you saw them every day at the pool or at school or at practice, 
is different seeing someone at the rodeo grounds with you. I grew up at Dee Bizzle. Um, he's a little bit younger than me. Uh, we kind of grew up in the same church, um, so I've known him and his family forever. Dee came in, I'm not going to say on my tail end, but I was already past presidency. Um, and he has come in and he has taken off running. He's, I mean, jumping through executive board positions and then rodeo chairman. Um, Dee's a hard worker. I hit the ground running. When I turned 21, my cousin Cal brought me out uh, to join up. I was in college still, so I came back for two or three weeks of rodeo season uh, to come help out in the sponsors building. I moved back with my wife, Sheila, in 2014, and at that point, it was, I never looked back. We've always been part of the JC family. Uh, if that's being present in 16, uh, worked as the chairman of the Crawfish Boil in 19, and then won the general election for general co-chairman in 2020. And I'm the general chairman in 2022 and have enjoyed the full ride all the way up until. <laughs> what do you want to know about D? Anything. Uh, firebrand, energetic. Uh, oh, I love D to death. I've known him for a long time. He's, 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 he's good as gold. Uh, I've known him through Boy Scouts and through uh, the JCs. He's, uh, he's a good young man. He's going to be good for the community for years to come. He comes from a very solid family. I mean, his mom and dad are great people. Yeah, I can't say anything bad about D. It's overwhelming how excited I am that so many people are getting behind the Sykes and JCs and the rodeo this year. There's so much support out in the community. If you drive around, you're seeing rodeo. People are dressing up for the week of rodeo. What is it, Monday this week? And We've got rodeo in two days and people are excited. People are ready. Something I think that JCs in general are dreading is the Saturday night of rodeo. I, I can already tell you, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it on my family side, but as a, as a chairman, as a JC, everybody hates to see that Saturday come. We've worked so hard. So many months have gone into this. Uh, I mean, pretty much the Sunday after last year's rodeo is when we started planning and it's all coming to an end in less than a week. He's done a good job. He brought a lot of energy and he's got a lot of good ideas. He kind of started out at the ground level and worked his way up, uh, earned the respect of everyone, otherwise he wouldn't have been voted chairman. But they've really done well this past year. I say this new group of men that are, that are running this now, they're taking it to a new level. They've got new ideas and, uh, and they've, they've done an awesome job. They've got a lot more to come as well. Yeah, so in 2016, I was uh, full bore in it. You know, I was so excited. I uh, was honored with being elected the, the president of the actual JC club here in town uh, with six other gentlemen that were part of the executive board. Uh, I was young, you know, I was 26, just married, uh, took that task on, had a lot of growing experiences as a leader you know, did a lot of did a lot of things that I felt like I could have done differently and got to learn from each and every one of them, which is awesome because that's the point of this organization, this club. And I think being that young and being the president of such a large, respected uh, organization was a great learning experience for someone like myself. He's a really, really eager individual. And when he sees a need then he's gonna do everything in his power to get it done. Whether it be, you know, the smallest little thing for an individual or for, for the community as a whole. He was beyond busy, obviously, that week. And I had a, a guy come up to me and he said, there's a, there's a kid here that he's got special needs. He said, he's got a poster for this guy singing and he is, just infatuated with this guy. You can tell just by the way he's acting that he just he loves this guy. If there's any way that you can get that boy in the dirt to get a little bit closer, then by all means, please do. I said, let me go talk to D. And so I went and talked to D and I told him the, the situation. He said, you get that boy down in the dirt and you get him right up front. And he said, if anybody stops you, tell him to call D Bizzle because I got your back on it. He said, get that boy up there. They all just started crying, said that they had driven all the way from Springfield, Illinois to come see this guy and that it was just a dream come true to be able to get up that close and personal with the entertainment. It's not something that I did, that was D. Bizzle that, that gave us permission to, to allow that to happen. And it's just, it's simple things like that, along with 
the drive as a whole that DC's to help improve and, and grow and make everything better that really makes him stand out as an individual. I tend to believe as you know, the chairman of this rodeo that we have an impact on these young kids that are in the rodeo world and they look back and say, one day I want to be a PRCA professional athlete and ride in this arena. We have had multiple people from this community that are in the rodeo world. Uh, we have a young man that comes around that's from Sison, graduated from Sison, Spencer David, who he rodeoed all of his stint of college. And to me, that's, that's just a fantastic footprint. Maybe this rodeo helped keep him in the rodeo world. Maybe it kept him intrigued, grew one more small fan for this rodeo for life and that they're gonna be a patron for life. That to me is an impact in a non-monetary way that I feel we have on people. He goes out there and he busts his tail for the, for the community um, on and off the grounds, as we say. He's, he's a big supporter of the JC's, uh, stand-up guy. One, one of the ones we're probably gonna see a, a exhausted rooster one day. Yeah, when you turn 40, uh, you age out, so to say, and you become an exhausted rooster. Uh, I got that shortly after my chairman year. I had to stay on the board one more year uh, after my chairmanship, but then shortly after that, I became an exhausted rooster, I believe in 11. And, uh, you know, it's for guys that are still active and want to be part of the group. They uh, honor you by, by exhausting you, and they it's kind of like a roast. They call you out, and they tell you all the great things you did, and they make fun of you of the silly things you did. And, and there's always stories of both. Hand you a plaque and shake your hand and... and slap you on the back and we then start talking about all the things that we remember doing uh, for a lot of years with a lot of your good friends. It's a great position to be in to be one of those guys that gets exhausted because you a little bit more respect and a little bit more appreciation for the things you did do to get to that position. To get exhausted you got to get points built up and you get points built up by chairing you know stuff like that. I don't go to the JC meetings a lot anymore and gotten too old you know what I'm saying that's a younger man's game. I'd go out sometimes and work, but, but not very much. And uh, because it was, there were so many young guys that come in, and they have learned and taken over the whole operation of it, so you don't need old folks out there all the time. But a lot of the old guys go out and they, you know, they take, uh, collect tickets and do one thing or another, work in a, work in a, a novelty stand or, or work in a fish stand or, or sell uh, beverages. I wasn't out there for the exhausted rooster, but, I, you know, I was out there for people and PR and so I've been in the concession stand probably I'd say it's probably been 12 15 years we done the bleacher jobs one year I operated the cameras I've done the lighting uh, then I went to beer stands with Lou Polovic worked the Lomax beer stand I worked there then I went to Lou's and worked there for umpteen years and then finally Trace talked to me you know here and said hey you need to move over to concession stand with us and I said, okay. Man, they, those guys are unsung heroes of what they do over in the concession stand. Year in and year out, they're over there chopping and doing everything that they can, and nobody, and nobody ever knows they're there because they're inside, and they just have their own good time. But that, you know, the glasses, you can't say anything bad about them. I mean, those guys, first of all, could throw you through a wall, but secondly, I mean, they're just good as gold and they never would. For a year in and year out, you're, they're one of those that were JCs, but then long after ever being a member of JCs, they've just been out there doing what they do to help the community you know, and, and the other great guys. The average guy doesn't realize when they start and when they finish, and it's a 24-hour process. They're cooking they're cooking Boston Butts for that good old barbecue sandwich that everybody likes at the rodeo grounds and, and working in the uh, concession area and have done it for years. And they're, you know, tireless. You know, they're going to be there. You really don't have to make a phone call. You know, you just you go out there and you see their trucks. You're like, well, man, they're here again. Thank goodness. Those things have a way of passing down to the next guys and you know and I'd say the majority of those guys out there doing it now were watching them do it when they first started and wanted to learn what they do so I can be a part of that too so it's again it's just a, a cumulative group of people that make that happen and, and certainly the glass boys were right in there for years and years. I remember as a kid uh, Trace and Mike Glaus and my dad uh, David would have these huge butcher knives and every barbecue that was made was hand chopped hand pulled everything and that was those three doing it and you know as the time has gone gone on uh they've been able to you know upgrade a little bit from that to some nice machinery back there to help 
help make the job a little bit easier. But you can guarantee if you walk through the concession stand area during rodeo, you're going to see the Glouse boys back there with their big smiles and cutting up all the, the bar famous barbecue meat that everybody enjoys having here at the rodeo grounds. Man, there, there's a lot you can tell you about that family as a whole. Very, very highly respected family. I grew up with some of the younger generation of the Glouse family. They really take community to heart. They obviously have built their business around the community. They've all stayed in the community. We run Sunny Solid Waste. My mom and dad started it uh, back in, I think dad started picking up trash in 1960. And we just progressed from there. Uh, it was kind of a sideline business. My dad was a mechanic by trade, but then as we grew, business grew, we done less mechanic. And so, and then we run about approximately five counties here in, in the Booty Hill, Missouri. That's all I know is trash. That's all I grew up in. They will do anything for the community. You can call them, say, hey, you know, I got this going on, can you all help me? And, and they're the first people to jump in and volunteer. If something goes wrong out there, they're gonna be there to help. Uh, years ago, one of our tractor drivers hit a gate, and I'm talking less than an hour before showtime, and bent the gate. The judges would not approve this shoot. We took the gate off, ran down to the glasses, had police help escort us out to their shop, and 15 minutes later, these men had it straightened, fixed, took it back, the judges approved it, and without that kind of help, we'd, we'd have been sunk. We wouldn't have had a time to vent that night, but that's the kind of people that you want out there because they're, they're going to help no matter what it is. Last when you get this skate fixed, we got to, or we can't have the rodeo for the calf roping and stuff. So I said, well, bring it by. And it was bent pretty good. And then I put it, the gate up on blocks and stuff. And actually, I took a trash truck rolled up on it and bent it back. I'd have Joe watch me, you know, and I kept easing it up on it. And and we got it bent back straight and then I welded it and we kind of half painted it and, and Joe took it back out and put it on. And they said, the judges said, it looks good. It's fine, let's go. I heard Mr. Mike Glouse, you know, I talked to him one day after we had had a, a family incident and he called to check in on me. He said, man, I won't do anything that, to hurt you, but if I can help you, I will. You know, just just something quirky off, you know, off the shoulder kind of deal that that he just he called to check in, see how things were going, and and everybody in that whole family is like that. Yeah, we went out there one year. It had got a big rain. Uh, the tractors couldn't pull the stage into the arena because it was so muddy. So Jim Hunot called me. He said, "Hey, ain't y'all got one of them OR model Max?" And I said, "Yeah." So. We went out there and got it stationed, took it out there, and, and they hooked it. That old Mac just pulled it down the arena and pulled it right out. So they used that Mac truck that year, one of our trucks. So I thought that was pretty cool. It'd be nice to have a picture, you know what I'm saying, so we could put it up, but we didn't. Of course, you know, you're young and don't think about stuff like that. That's the one nice thing about the JCs, I can say as, a, as an older JC, is that I'm very proud to know that the guys that's followed me, it has not gone down. It's gone up in quality of the people, uh, uh, the dedication. Today's world takes a whole lot to run that rodeo. And where it used to, it was basically only JCs that were there. Uh, but it takes a lot of volunteers to come help. Uh, currently and for the last 20-something uh, years, I've been uh, kind of managing the East Beer Stand uh, at the rodeo grounds during the rodeo. We usually have anywhere between 10 to 14 people. Uh, we try to get uh, JCs when possible, but over the years, as they've kind of fallen by the wayside based on our age, because we're all getting older, uh, a lot fewer JCs and a lot of other guys that just kind of are friends and, and friends of our kids and people that we've worked with, you know, uh, outside of, of JCs. And, and these, a lot of them aren't JCs at all, but they're just volunteers. Uh, and as anyone will tell you, without the volunteers and the volunteer labor, that JC rodeo never happens. It's, uh, it's great to have the JCs, but you got to have a lot of folks to make it all function. What do we do at the rodeo? Well, in the East Beer Stand, we serve beer and 
What and are the, the other things? And the fancy mixed, the fancy. already pre-mixed drinks. We sell beer. Uh, we have a good time with each other. Um, I'd say that's the main thing that, we, of course, it's a good cause, but you know, we've all been doing it for, uh, I guess I found a 2008 t-shirt in the closet a while back, so that's how long I know I've been out there. Yeah, it's, it's been a long time. They're not worth a darn. I mean, they're just worthless. What, what do you want to know? I mean, they, both of them are just totally worthless. All right, no. <laughs> they're both great guys. They really are. It, it takes guys like that. Because it, it's, you know, you're asking a guy to come out and leave his family for four nights, for six hours at least, and just work. You know, and they're not paying you. It's just the, the camaraderie of the, of the people that you're with. You know, like I said, you never go wrong when you're meeting friends. You know, that's, that's what life's all about. The more people you meet, the better off you're going to be because you just, uh, you know, it's a helping hand when you're in a small community. And uh, those two guys are just, they're super guys. We do have a good time, but I mean, there's a lot of work that goes in on those nights. I mean, you, you don't have time to, uh, you know, really do much visiting. You, you know, you see a lot of people you only see once a year at that beer stand. True. Um, but on those nights, it's hard to even take time to talk to anybody because of the amount of people that are, that are going through uh, those, the rodeo. And the JCs, have, you know, they do a great job with the entertainment. Uh, that brings the crowds in, and uh, but I mean it's some hard work a, a couple of nights out there. It's it's harder than most people think, and it's pretty much a labor of love. That's that's a good way, I think, to describe it. And doing some community service, and uh, but yeah, it it is a lot of work. Sometimes more than we bargained for. Yeah, it's been many a nights you get home, uh, you know, twelve thirty. One o'clock in the morning, and uh, I mean, you're beat. You know, get up and probably drag in a little bit late to work. Luckily, uh, with what we do, it's not like we're super busy, but uh, it does make a long three or four days. But it's well worth it for what the JCs do for the community. As far as I know, history-wise, they call it the Dead Presidents Stand. Uh, the East Bear Stand was kind of an afterthought because, as you walk around the grounds and walk around the rodeo you go nowhere. Uh, prior to them building um, the walk through that you can go through now to get up to the cattle barons, once you got to that end, there was a, a cinder block uh, men's bathroom and, and then it just dead ended. So the wild bunch, as they used to call them, sat on that side. And it probably is, if it were not for the wild bunch, there wouldn't be any reason for a beer stand over there. Um, very little traffic. Again, it was on the way to nowhere, but the dead presidents portion of it was well, the people who ended up getting in there seemed to all be old presidents of the JCs. So it kind of took off from that. Gary Allen's crew over there at the beer stand, those guys make it a lot of fun. You know, any area that has a, is what we call fan facing, they're the people that deal with the, the customers and the fans that come in through the gates. Their job is, is to sell our entertainment package to those people and they do a great job. Gary's crew. Uh, they make it fun. They've got their own Twitter page. They're telling jokes. They're giving out name tags. They make sure that those fans have a great time and more importantly want to come back. And so, you know, the, the rodeo job is to put on the rodeo, the, the, the beer stands, the novelty stands, the concession stands, all those people that are involved with the fans that come in through the gates. Uh, they, they're, they're the most important part of the rodeo and Gary and his crew are awesome at it. <laughs> yeah, the year uh, the country singer Gary Allen was here and Gary was running that beer stand. They put a sign up that said uh, autographs by Gary Allen at five o'clock or six o'clock or whatever time. And and people showed up and Gary, he was standing there signing autographs and they're like, you're not the singer. He said, never said I was. Anybody that goes out, uh, once you you know get old enough to start going to the bars and go to college or wherever, you pretty much every bar you walk into has got stuff on the wall that really defy explanation. Some of it makes no sense. You see dollar bills stuck to a lot of places. You see mounted heads of game and fish and all those types of things. But you also see sports memorabilia and then you see some things that make absolutely no sense at all. And the one thing that I noticed originally that was missing was music. It's so quiet. You know, if the if the rodeo wasn't going on, you heard a little bit of the activity, but you could never see through the bleachers. So we were really you know, kind of away from all that. Uh, but we got the idea of starting to, to put up lights and to put up things that, you know, were kind of more like a bar atmosphere. 
and we thought music's the next you know common denominator that you go into a bar there's always music playing and because it's kind of our bar we got to play you know stuff that we like to hear and uh, had a pretty good cross section of music good cross section of people and we always found something that you know satisfied everybody but I think it was kind of unique at that time because we were the only beer stand that had music and as, as opposed to just people walking up and, and buying a, a beverage and, and walking off, they decided to just kind of hover around and listen to music while they were waiting for their favorite part of the rodeo to start or some people just kind of hung out until the music started. So we kind of got a little following from that because it was a little different and people just liked, you know, like just like the noise, you know, kind of like outdoor atmosphere, good bar, cold beer, it all seemed to go hand in hand. They bring a, their personality and very unique twist on this beer stand. It's probably, the, well, without a doubt, it's the most popular beer stand on the grounds. And they'll do something different every night. Uh, Gary Allen's always been very uh, creative on special t-shirts. Uh, that they that they get for this, you know, beer stand to work every night, and and it's it's become very popular. It's one of the main stopping points there on the grounds for people that come in. So Gary Allen and a few others they run the beer stand that's called Dead President, and that's the East Beer Stand Chili Beer. He has touched so many areas out here as a JC, and now he runs probably the most popular. Uh, beer stand, which creates jealousy amongst the other beer stands, which creates rivalry, which then creates better sales. And I feel like Gary and his, his crew has helped create something like that and have created this atmosphere that people want to hang out at. And I know there's people that they might not look forward to the artist or look forward to the rodeo, but they really look forward to hanging out at the East Beer Stand all four nights of rodeo and just hanging out with Gary and the guys. The 21 to 30 crowd, uh, that's where they tend to come over and buy their beer. Um, you know, when Gary took it over, which uh, he took it over before I went out there and it'd been a couple of years, but you know, he's the one that brought the music in, put up speakers, had a few decorations. Um, and then a good friend of ours, uh, David Murray started working out there and uh, he kind of took the decorations and put it on a whole nother level. This guy, David Murray, uh, he, he passed away, left us a few years ago, uh, lost his battle with cancer. And, uh, you know, that guy was electrifying. He, he was the reason that at the time that East Beer Stand was so much fun. They have their own social media page because of him. Two, three weeks before rodeo started, uh, he'd be out here and he had already been to every thrift store and found stupid family portraits and a duct tape. All the people who worked in the East Beer Stand's faces on them. The stuff that he would decorate with was other people's trash, but it was East Beer Stand's treasures. And he just made it fun. David Murray probably was one of Goodwill's best customers ever. He would walk in and find something that, like I mentioned before, just defy creative. It's just some creative little thumping that you put up there on the wall. He he actually got a picture of somebody's wedding picture and had their names on it and it, you crank it up and it made music and he you know decided well this will be great so who is it? I don't know but somebody will ask a question and we'll get to make up a story about it. He farmed next door to my dad's farm so I knew him even prior to him being involved in the JC's. No matter where you saw him he had a big smile on his face. He was just that kind of personality. When you met him you wanted to smile and and, uh, and he always had a joke or something. And uh, he was another one like Gary. He put a little twist on it, had like Facebook. that kept everyone involved in what's coming up at the dead president stand and stuff. So, uh, you know, they just, they all had their little twist that added to this to make it special. He had us on Twitter. He had us, you know, he had us out there on Facebook. He took pictures of customer. He brought his famous lulabelle, his cowbell, and he would hand it to the customers and they'd shake the cowbell and he'd take a picture and he would post them that night and stay up till, you know, two or three in the morning posting all these hundreds of pictures that he would take. And people would want to see their pictures, so they'd go to the site and word of mouth and social media being what it is, it kind of took on a life of its own and just increased uh, 
uh, a, kind of the next generation of where the kids that were turning 21 that were actually able to put on the wristband and, and, and buy something to drink, you know, they kind of liked hanging around there as well and being part of, you know, what the East Beer Stand brought to the, you know, the social media world, which was, which was kind of fun for all of us. He bought some old church pews and, and got some old uh, wire spools and, and had the beer garden, this little place to sit down over there. You could hang out and visit if you, uh, between when the rodeo was maybe uh, setting up the music people would come over there and hang out and talk. It was kind of turned into a social deal, but um, yeah, that was probably his legacy through the beer stand. It was like Christmas to him. Yeah, it, it really was. When we first started uh, kind of the second group of guys in there, there was a center block men's bathroom. And uh, Chris Matthews and David Murray were kind of <laughs> joined souls with their sense of humor. And uh, Chris decided it would be great to put a piece of, of plastic over the, the drain in the urinal. The urinals were just fabricated tin, uh, you know, nailed to the wall and a typical men's urinal. Well, they decided they put a little piece of plastic uh, over the urinal so the water would back up a little bit. It was always going down there, but it, it was more like a pond than a urinal. So David somehow found uh, a bag of rubber ducks, floating little squeak squeak toy rubber ducks, threw about 15 of them in the urinal. So you can imagine, you walk in the, and there's ducks floating in the urinal, and Chris puts a sign above the urinal. It says, bring a duck to the East Beer Stand, win a free beer. And none of us really knew it was in there. And so this guy walks up with this duck, he goes, hey man, he said, there's a sign on the wall in there that says, if I bring this here, I get a free beer. And we're all like, do what now? So, and this was before cell phones were real, you know, <laughs> real predominant. And um, so the guy's like, yes, there's a sign right there. So we walk in there, four or five of us, and sure enough, he's put the sign up there. And Matthew starts laughing because he didn't tell any of us he'd done this. And uh, so David's like, yeah, just give that guy that duck and he'll get you a beer. And there's somebody silly enough to put their hand out there and he puts the duck in there. We're like, no, no, no. So everybody gets out the, you know, the disinfectant and washes their hands just because they saw it happen. And we're like, so thanks to David Murray, we still had four or five or six rubber ducks uh, that were purchased to carry on the tradition of what once was the uh, duck pond in there where the rubber ducks would earn you a free beer. And we made good on it. We actually, we gave them the free beer, but we made whoever handed, <laughs> handed the, the duck to him, the guy had to pay for it. You couldn't believe it happened, first of all, but second of all, it was just funny as heck. He was the life of the East Beer Stand. I mean, he was the party. He was just the, the personality that would go around. And it, David Murray was just one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, just one of the e most even kill guys you'd ever meet. And, uh, yeah, he just, he had a good time. He invited me over there a couple of years to help them with the East Beer Stand. And I, I did, and I'm, I'm glad I did. It would be easy to say that Gary and the rest of the guys at East Beer Stand are trying to carry on the, the, the legacy that David left behind, which is, you know, that's some big shoes to fill. But I feel like Gary and the guys are doing a great job of, of carrying on David's uh, traditions and having a good time. David's shoes are, are impossible to fill because he was, he was always thinking and always had a good idea. Uh, worked really hard. He and I used to go out, you know, by ourselves really. And uh, during the week of rodeo, Monday or Tuesday night, they'd be running slack, and we'd be putting up the lights and putting up all this stuff. And we had all these things in tubs, and uh, it got to where it was a several-hour process of getting all that stuff put together. Talked to Gina, and she was glad to, to hand over all the stuff that David had collected for all those years. And it's it's currently residing in my garage for the last couple of years, and. Uh, we're still trying to add to it and keep exactly the things that he, you know, had worked hard to find and, and we get a kick out of seeing every year. Kind of makes everybody think of, of, of David and, and what he brought to the table and, and all the things that he did for us to, to make it a, a fun environment and just a really great place to, to hang out for three or four days and be with your friends and, and really see people that you see that come back to our stand every year. You know, they're looking for wonder if those guys are still over there. So it's, it's kind of interesting to, to see the following that uh, continues to come over there because of the efforts of David and, and all the guys that work there that work hard four nights and stand on their feet for six hours and put up with <laughs> the shenanigans that can occur late night when 
alcohol is being served in any location. He had a great year. I mean, it was it was awesome, and he he handled himself really well. I mean, we sold one out a month and a half before rodeo. That was really unheard of since I've been here. You know, selling two three nights out, and just the amount of people were here. It's a little. I mean, it's it's neat to be down there in the front of the shoots, and you look out there, and your stands are completely full for three nights, and it's just an amazing feeling. Because then we know what we can do. We've got that many people here. We know what we can do for the community because we know that that's, you know, we're making money and all that money's coming right back to Sykeston. What is next for Dwight Bizzle? Man, uh, enjoy for the next few years, helping out where help is needed, uh, taking a back seat, trying to keep making this place as world-class as it is. Once you've been chairman and you're a JC, you never quit. You always are gonna have a special place in your heart for this organization. And for me, I think uh, I'm always I'm always going to be involved in some form or fashion or trying to help with a certain project. I mean, you know, all of us have gone through it and all of us past chairmen, you know, we're there, you know, for you to lean on. And, you know, you can kind of sit back and tell. Uh, I joined in 2009. Uh, so I've been a member ever since then. I actually didn't live here at the time. Uh, my father was a JC and he passed away. And um, as a, his involvement out here for many years and me growing up out here as a kid, I really wanted to continue the legacy. So I joined uh, following his passing, got involved and started running for different areas and, and getting myself involved in both the club and the, and the rodeo side of things and still here to this day. That's kind of a whirlwind. You know, you joined in 2009 and you're chairman in 2016. I got, like, as I mentioned, heavily involved pretty quickly, ran for different board seats, um, got on the rodeo board, ran for rodeo chairman and uh, was very young at the time. And, and <laughs> knowing now what I didn't know then would have probably been better off to wait a few years. But uh, the time was right and it worked out and I was able to have my first kid the same year as I, I was general rodeo chairman. So uh, it's a big part of our family from my dad to me and now my son being involved uh, coming out here from the year I was, was rodeo chairman. It's, it's a part of our, our lineage and our history. I was actually hesitant at first. I know I wanted to, but I was trying to start my career so I was like, I don't have time to go out there. And they kept saying, Bart, just come out and see what it's about. I was like, I know what it's about. I grew up with it. I know it takes a lot of time. But then the more I was like, you know what? I want to help out. I want to do something. So I went to a couple meetings, sat there, and I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm diving in. And once you dive in, you're in. You keep finding more and more things that you want to do because you see what all it does. And you see the camaraderie of all the guys out there. And it's, it's genuine. I mean, it, you got bankers out there building fences. You got doctors out there that are doing electrical work i mean it's it's really neat to see the guys kind of get out of their shell from their day-to-day -day life and come out there and put on this thing my first year was in 08 and i was treasurer um, from there i kind of bounced on the executive board um, to vice president i was president of the jc's in 2011 um, and i've sat on the rodeo board i think i did a five-year term on the rodeo board um, and i was president of the rodeo board for a year so I've kind of jumped around all areas, advertising, listing, chairman. Once you get in, you kind of move around and see what you want, what interests you. I mean, some of the guys like the pins and shoots, some of the guys like the fencing. My style is more helping out with advertising, marketing, um, kind of the back end stuff. I joined back in 81 or 82, worked my way into being rodeo chairman in 1993. After that, stayed in the arena. I found that I really liked the arena, the adrenaline close to the, the livestock. Uh, I'm still currently there, probably about to the age to age out there, but it's just been a really fun, fun ride, you might say, after 41 or 42 years out there at the rodeo grounds. As chairman in 1993, I was very fortunate. The rodeo chairman is basically just, you know, the guy that gets to take the credit if it all goes well. But we had uh, four nights of basically sellouts. We had a little bad weather, but that makes for a better rodeo. 
But all in all, it was it was a very good experience for me, a learning experience again. And from then, I just moved on to the rodeo board and some other positions. My dad was a member of the JCs when I was growing up, and we had a lot of horses, so I was always raised around the equine, and I was always riding the grand entry, and I would go out there and help him when when I was a kid, and then. As I got older, me and my friends, when we got to the, to the age to join, we joined and started working the ground screw and pins and shoots. And back then we had bleacher crew because the bleachers were still wooden. But uh, I've worked on parties. I did ground screw, uh, pins and shoots chairman. Then I ran for the rodeo board. Some things happened on uh, my personal side that, that I was not going to run for chairman ever and didn't have the intention to. And then around 2001 and two, I had some things that made me re- Reevaluate, and I decided I wanted to to run for chairman and see see if I could do a good job serving the community and and running a good event. So that's why I ran. It's highly valuable for up and coming chairman to have a year before they actually be chairman to see and get get like their feet under before they get, take it over. At the time, people felt like I was the guy to you know kind of run behind D and. He's more of a business type guy and I'm more of a get it done type guy. And they felt like, you know, we two would work well together. And I felt like we did, honestly, you know, so that's, a, that's where I'd put it. You know, with the way the world is today, it's just changing, you know. Things that worked four or five years ago don't seem to work, you know, these times. So it's just a challenge every year. You know, we had good weather, you know, played a good part in it. I mean, they done a fine job, you know. As far as being a chairman, it's just you—you you don't never know what's around the corner. You know, curveballs can come at any time, and I felt like you know we really didn't have any big ones, you know. But uh, it was a good, good rodeo all in all, really good. Probably one of the best ones ever so far. The co-chairman year is a learning experience for you. You're supposed to follow the chairman and and see how all the contracts work and all the you know dealing with all the different entertainment issues and all the concessions issue. So from that standpoint, it was a good learning process. Uh, I'd already been on the board for a couple of years, so I kind of knew. I had a good year. I enjoyed it. We had four nights of really nice weather. Chris Ledoux was our Saturday night act, and that was the year that he came out of six. So it was one of his last shows. Got along with everybody. We didn't really have any issues. We made pretty good money to give back to the community. So, I mean, I wouldn't, I, would, I mean, there's always pitfalls inside of a year, but, but in all, my overall experience was, was positive. I think every goal as a past chairman is to help the next up and comers keep providing for this community and grow in the sport of rodeo for Sykes, Missouri. It's definitely going to be a more backseat role helping Ethan this next year in whatever capacity he needs to have an even better year than we've had in the past. You know, Ethan was a guy that, that showed up. He was from Tennessee area and you know, there's there's a lot of guys that come through the club that if they're not really from the community, it's almost like they're an outsider for a while and it takes them a while to, you know, really build up those friendships. And, uh, you know, we're always open and inviting to, to people coming in, but Ethan is one of those guys that he walks into a room and he's immediately everybody's best friend. Ethan came along, you know, a few years ago and he's just got the personality he fits in really good. He's he's just a good old country boy, but he's he's got the the JCs and the rodeo best interest at heart, and he works hard for that. And that, he he'll do an awesome job. I'm proud of him. I was really impressed with him to start with, and have gotten to be really good friends with him. You know, we're both in the same area of employment. I guess you could say we're both in agriculture. But he's just one of those guys that he's got a really calm demeanor, but. You know, it just, he's got everything taken care of. And and that's one thing that is is a little different from D because D's a real ecstatic kind of guy to get things done. Whereas Ethan is more, more of, you know, we got this taken care of, man, don't worry about it. But he's, he's a business oriented guy. You know, he just walked in and was accepted because of his personality and his laid back character. Don't let that deceive you. He's, he's always thinking and he's got good things on his mind for the rodeo. We've been working on it really, really hard. You know, there's some things we've been talking about doing with the bleachers and this and that. Just some stuff that, you know, trying to make this place better and continue the trend, you know, to keep having great rodeos, 
and you know provide a, uh, you know a great place for our patrons too you know anything we can do for them because those are the number one thing that really keeps this place going is our patrons and uh, just striving to make it a better environment for them. The guys who who become uh, the chairman they give up a lot of their life and their family does for for that year that they're chairman it's just uh, it's a big it's a big job you know. You know bringing 40 plus thousand people in here to this town the economic stance of it you know just alone restaurants you know gas stations hotels you know the benefit that Sykeston gets from this thing is really 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 good and uh, Sykeston as a whole as a community has really backed us too true and true and you know and, and this and this club too is you know it only starts here and it goes further because I mean you look at your city councils I mean we've got JC's on city council mayor you know, et cetera, on down the pipeline or past JCs and business owners, and they do everything they can to help support us. Well, there's people coming here from everywhere. When they, when they have 10,000 people out there at night, uh, they gotta go somewhere. So that restaurant's right here can all do well and everything. And it's good business for Sykeson. All the motels fill up, all the restaurants fill up. It's just, and the gas stations, they gotta buy gas when they leave. So there's, it's, it's pretty good for the economy, real good for the economy. It sounds, Silly, but for rodeo, you'd get a new pair of boots. You'd get new cowboy boots for the rodeo, and and that always kind of stood out in my mind. And rain or heat, whatever it was, we were going to the rodeo. Both of our kids grew up in rodeo from day one. My son Spence, he's joined now. He's uh, actually on the executive board of the club, but he's uh, he's kind of worked his way into the arena. They work on the timed events in down there and untie calves and. And so he's gotten involved. Of course, he grew up doing the youth rodeo, so he had an interest at an early age, probably due to the fact that we always took him to the rodeo and they were always part of it. As soon as I could walk, I wanted to be with Dad, you know, and that's that's where we'd go. And so we'd go out there, and he would be out there the weeks before helping work on fences and helping clean out the chutes to make sure the slide gates were clean and just anything that needed to be done, it just seemed like he knew what needed to be done already. And so I'd jump in there and grab a shovel and start digging a hole or pressure washing, cleaning stuff off, and started spending a lot of time out there at a really young age. And, and that really helped spark my interest in, in the rodeo and JC's. I think it'd be neat to have my son wear the buckle. If he has the interest in it, I don't want to influence or push him, but uh, you learn as you go. Been around the rodeo for my whole life, like I said earlier. Started coming out to the rodeo at two months old. And it's been a, a staple in my life and my family growing up. And uh, so I, I just really hope to see, you know, 70 years was a great hit. Let's hope for another 70 years and keep the, keep the rodeo and the energy going. You know, my son told me one time I come home, boy, he wanted to hook me. Well, here in Sykeston, Missouri, I was black and blue and I couldn't even wear my blue jeans. And he said, you going to the, the rodeo? I said, yeah, who do you think's gonna feed you kids? And then I broke my ribs and I broke my <laughs> Story of my life. My pocketbook was broke. Everything was broke. <laughs> but I loved it, I loved it. I loved the entertaining people. I loved the, I loved life and I could like I told him at the, Hall of Fame, you know. Old French said, if you love life, it'll love you back. You know, and uh, that's the way my philosophy of life. I love the people. Yep. I love entertaining people. I like to make people laugh. And I like to fight. But I never did, you know, say I want to be number one, because that didn't really bother me. I just wanted to do a good job every time I went out there. Mayor of Sykes, Missouri, told me one time I come here, I worked Sykes for 60 years in a row. He said, Rick Young, I go to all these homes. There's more Rick Young pictures in there that they got of their own family. I said, well, Mayor, I am their family. And you come to Rodeo 60 years ago. You know everybody, you know the kids, you know the grandkids. Now your grandkids are bringing their kids to the Rodeo and they said that. And I was here when all these JCs were born. I said, that's what you call job security, son. <laughs> But it's just a great life.